question about theology. If Jesus finished everything on the cross, then why are people not healed and de uh, delivered of demons you know, right away? or When they're converted? I, it doesn't say in the question, so I could probably just jump through when they're converted. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. It'd be nice, you know. Yeah. You know, we're, we're all in process, and that process means, you know, I have... I'm coming out of a lifestyle that's so anti-Christ in nature. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was saved as a child or if I was saved as, you know, an 80-year-old man, you know, I've come out of a lifestyle. And while all things are made new, in a, you know, in our heart, there's still, I'm coming out of a lifestyle where I'm a child in this new kingdom. And there's things that you grow into. You're just not instantly mature. And some of the things that we need changed in our life is an issue of maturity. Some of it is is that contamination issue, you know? Mm -hmm. Why it doesn't happen all at once, I can't answer. Yeah. But I can say absolutely it doesn't happen all at once. Mm -hmm. That's why scripture teaches us to do certain things, you know? Um, don't give place to the devil. Why? Because it's possible to give place to the mm -hmm. devil. You know, why, why should we give attention to certain things in our life? You know, uh, as, you give, as you pay attention to these things, you will be complete and mature in Christ. And there's these statements about patience and long-suffering and enduring and fasting and, you know, all, all these issues that come up in the Christian life. You know, they're just a, they're a part of our process, you know. Mm -hmm. And why it doesn't happen all at once, I don't know. But I'm, I, I, I do know this, and this is kind of paradoxical maybe. It was all covered at Calvary everything that is needed. Jesus doesn't have to return and do anything else. It mm -hmm. was all paid for then. Mm -hmm. So everything that we break into, whether it's a, an anointing for miracles or a deliverance from an addiction, mm -hmm. it was all taken care of at Calvary. And what we do in our walk with Christ is we learn to step into these realms, you know, mm -hmm. into these things he purchased for us. We, and, uh, so it's, it's a process of learning to use the, the power or the authority he's given us so it doesn't come all at once to, uh, here's a badge and a gun. I know you just joined the force. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're only five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Try not to hurt your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, there's a difference between what, we, what I have in my possession and what I have in my account. Yeah. Everything's put into the account. Mm -hmm. But maturity makes withdrawals. Faith mm -hmm. makes withdrawals. There are certain elements of our life that enables us to withdraw from what's already been put into the account. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's part of the process. It's mm -hmm. like, you, you know, it's, it's like a person who gets an inheritance. I remember uh, years ago uh, knowing somebody, their, their father died, and, and they had a very huge inheritance left for them, but they couldn't touch it till they were 35, mm -hmm. you know. It's like there's certain markers in our life where we, are, we grow into what was laid aside for us a long time ago, yeah. 2,000 years ago, you know. Yeah. And that, the Christian life is full of mm -hmm. that stuff, you know, where we... We become qualified in the sense that that uh, the blessing won't kill us. Mm -hmm. You know, it comes back to um, uh, the thought that God disciplines us so we can survive His blessings. Yeah. You know, He prunes us so yeah. that His blessing on our life doesn't kill us, because you know Israel ended up time after time being blessed by God, but falling off into some crazy yeah. sin. You know, and and, yeah. and so because of that Christians have come to the conclusion that God wants us to be miserable in this life so that we stay pure. That's, that's not the answer either, that's kind of dumb. Yeah. You know, it's his blessing. We just have to learn how to be mature enough to live with blessing without it killing us, you know, mm -hmm. without it taking us away into independence or rebellion or whatever. Yeah. So I, I think that's huge. And then do you, do you have any, put any stock in the idea of like a corporate <laughs> anointing or a, a, an in, individual anointing? Like, I think we've talked about in times past where that the belief that you were actually saved in the moment of asking, you know, was, is a relatively, a kind of a new idea. For a long time you were saved by being connected with the church and taking the Eucharist, the sacraments with the right, church. Right, right. But then, you know, with, with Finney and these guys that, hey, it's just a confession and it happens in an instant. There was a, a faith that actually people are saved right. in a moment of right. confession. Right. And then, you have that same sense that we're, we're corporately moving towards greater anointing or in these areas of dealing with the demonic or? I do, mm -hmm. I do uh, strongly. I think there are some things that God won't, you know, historically we look at, you know, the, the Wigglesworths and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Finney and, mm -hmm. you know, these people, 
and there are heroes, but what God put on them is small compared to what he'd like to put on his body. Yeah. Because then the focus isn't just one person. Yeah. You know, um, I, I really believe that the Lord wants to raise up the Finneys, the Wigglesworths, the whoever, to impart, but so that there is a corporate expression. Yeah. So that it's, you know, you, you don't just target one individual. You know, yes. the enemy doesn't just target one individual because it's everybody's carrying it. Yeah. And I do believe that. I also believe there's a unique flavor to every house of faith, every church yeah. family. Yeah. You know, the Lord will put a certain grace on us, a certain grace on Little Country mm -hmm. Church and the Risen King and each of the ones. And denominations have certain flavors, yeah. you know, tribal flavors yeah. that are that are rich and wonderful to, you know, I, I that's one of the things I like to do is to be with so many different groups and just see the diversity. And mm -hmm. I don't want to do that, but I so celebrate it. And I'm yeah. so glad to, you know, to be, to be there. So, yeah. um, but that's, I think, I think it's just a huge part of the mm -hmm. whole process of just, you just, uh, you realize that God has put things in our account. There are corporate anointings, corporate expressions. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of cool when you get a brand new believer, they get grafted into a church family that has many years of walking in something it means they're in a protected environment to grow fast, much faster than if they were outside of that. It's yes. kind of like drafting by the big yes. semi truck. You know, yeah, it, just, it just makes it easier, and uh, and that's that's part of. Well, it's been a, it. you know one of the things is just the idea that that there's a, a whole body carrying an anointing, mm -hmm. is a relatively new you know idea. We were mm -hmm. pretty much the. The one with the hot hands, either the saint yeah, of old, yeah, the yeah. Saint Francis of Assisi, or, yes, yes. or the, the master teacher in Calvin and Luther, and yep. and even up to the healing revivals of the 50s and 60s, they were. It wasn't the idea that it was everybody could do this. No, that's right, and, and that was uh, that's what I think ultimately brought it in to, to that to that move mm -hmm. of God in past moves, because mm -hmm. if you think about when the Lord raises up someone head and shoulders above everybody else, you know, yeah. you'll have a nobody. And they have this encounter, and suddenly they have this extraordinary yeah. anointing. You know, a Finney who's a lawyer who suddenly preaches with such extraordinary power, a Wigglesworth who's a plumber that now crazy things happen when he prays or he preaches. And, and suddenly, you know, they, uh, they're head and shoulders above everyone else. Yeah. But the role is to equip. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. to equip the saints so that the saints come into what was unusual, comes into it as a norm. You know, it's... Yeah. it's it doesn't mean that person stops growing. There's still more, but the point is, is to raise the corporate anointing, yeah. and it, and that's why I think it ends, is because the the anointing I don't think is to be used, the anointing on my life just to be used to gather people together so they can feed from my gift. Yeah, there's a part of that. Yeah, but it's got to be to equip them to go past what I have, what I'll have time to do. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and if we can get that shift, that's one of the things I think has been. A theological breakdown in anointings and giftings mm -hmm. is men have have used their gift well to take care of people, but have not caught the piece. At least it appears yeah. from history have not caught the part that they're to equip the saints to actually do. Yeah, and then the whole success and a successor concept. Yes. You know, bring up yeah. other people to carry the same anointing. You know, it's been a breakdown there historically, and mm -hmm. so things end that I don't think ever should have ended. Mm -hmm.